Hi, Pastor Nathan Decker with your hashtag Better Together Devotion for today. And this whole week, I've been sharing about the different ways that the church connects, whether it's within the community, within schools, with the government, all these different ways that we interact with other folks, even with other churches. And one of the things that's happening, it happened rather, in the last 30 to 40 years in the United States especially, is that we are looking more and more like the context that the New Testament came through and less and less like the context that we were rather familiar and comfortable with for centuries, which was Christendom. We were comfortable in Christendom. And when I say that phrase, what I'm talking about is kind of this overarching heavy culture where pretty much everybody had knew the, the some form of way of understanding the scriptures. Everybody was, we may have disagreed and bickered about Christianity, but for the most part, we, everybody we knew was, was just assumed to be a part of the church and a part of Christianity. They may not have attended church. Uh, highest church attendance in the United States, for example, was probably in the 1950s, uh, where it maybe approached close to half the population, which is not all of the population. But, but at the same time, there was this assumption within the culture and that everything was kind of organized and focused and promoted Christianity. Well, that's not how the New Testament context is. In the New Testament world, when you read the, the journeys of the Apostle Paul or even the journeys of Jesus through just a small geographic area that was Galilee, Judah, and Samaria, in that whole Palestinian area, what you find is a pluralism, a, a, an area where there were tremendous different faith groups and different interactions with different, different gods being named. You know, go read the book of Acts where... Paul was walking among Athens and finds, you know, there, there's even a statue to the unknown God. Just in case we've missed one, we want to cover all the bases. That kind of understanding. So how are we as Christians, now that our world is much more like the first century world, to interact with different faith groups, interact with people with, with people who don't even have beliefs, the nuns, or, or to interact with atheists or agnostics or, or, or those that are burned out and feel like they've been just rejected by the church, the unchurched and de-churched. How do we interact with them? Well, go back to scriptures again. Let's look and see. Jesus talks about other sheep in the Gospel of John. I have other sheep that you have no clue about. He, he talks about reaching out. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus constantly crosses over bodies of water from the Gentile side to the Jewish side, and he does things in the Gentile context. He interacts with a Syrophoenician woman. He's willing to interact with and, and, and heal someone by, you know, just guys by saying it so with, with the Roman centurion. The letters that Paul writes are, for the most part, not letters to insiders, but to those who have just recently come inside from outside. And they brought in with them from the outside all kinds of questions and problems and difficulties and ways of worship and things. One of the things that we as the church need to do is to focus less and less on making sure that we convert other people to our tradition or our way of thinking, but instead be open to how Jesus interacts in their life. Be open to how the Spirit and the Gospel is given to them. Paul was very good about going out into the world and offering a wonderful invitation to experience the gospel and then watching from afar as God developed community and developed leaders from within the community to become churches. And all those churches had difficulties and problems, yes, but all those churches also had unique flavors and unique expressions of faith. When we think about other faiths and our interaction with other faiths, including non-faith, even atheism and stuff, instead of coming as those who have the answers, why don't we come as those who are striving to walk alongside of them, striving to encounter God in the conversation, in the relationship with them, and encounter them as other sheep, as other children of God, as other people who are also on a journey who may add something to our own expression in life as we talk and, and share and, and understand what their experience with God has been. I'm a United Methodist, and in United Methodist faith, we have this thing called prevenient grace, this understanding that God has been at work already. There's nowhere that I can ever go where God is not doing great things, striving to connect with human beings. And a part of that means that I can't take God anywhere. I don't take God into the school system or take God to the government or take God into a bar or anything else. I go there trying to meet God.
because I trust that God is already there. Let's pray together as we connect. Lord, help us to be humble enough to not have all the answers, but instead to follow you and to have an open heart seeking relationships with others. In your name, where we each find blessing and connection in the interaction of who you are. All through you, Jesus.